Hi everybody, welcome to Atlas Ordinary, I'm Ben. So I am going to be doing a paper towel staggered swipe. Um, I've done a couple before, I've done a green, a blue and a pink. And I've decided to do earthy kind of nat natural colours. So the colours I have got is Burnt Sienna, which is that one. So I'm going to put these right at my way because otherwise I put them at my feet and then I trip over them when I'm painting. I've got yellow okra and these are all Montmartre Studio acrylic paints. Then I have crimson. So I wanted um, a more earthier type of red so I didn't go for the brilliant red which I nearly did. And then the last colour is Burnt Umber, which is that one, because you want a bit of darkness in there to kind of help it highlight. Now, I've just got to check my consistency. It shouldn't really matter as long as they're all relatively even. They all are. I had to add, so these were 45 grams paint and 45 grams pouring medium, which is my Elmer's Clear Glue 70% Water 30% Mixture. They were 45 and 45, except I had to, actually, I made this one 40, not 45, because it was so thick. And I made, I had to add more paint into this one because this was thin. So I've virtually got them at the right consistency. But if you start off at 45, 45, so one to one, and then adjust the couple. So that was thicker, that was thinner, and I just adjusted them accordingly by adding more pouring medium to that and more paint to that. So first of all, we're just going to put the paint on the canvas and tilt it so it's covering the whole surface. I haven't decided it doesn't shouldn't really matter too much what order I go in just randomly kind of swirl it around I'm only using half a cup at first or half a cup three quarters of a cup you just need to get some of the paint on there I usually do go the darker colour at the base and the lighter colour towards the top. This is slightly thinner. I can feel it, but that's okay. Shouldn't make a huge difference. Alrighty, now I'm going to use up the other part of the cup. Try not to agitate it too much and create too many bubbles. Um, you do want it mixed up, but you don't want tons and tons of bubbles throughout it because that does cause issues. I'm actually going to put the this one next because I think I want the red a little bit more closer to the top. Now, none of these have any silicon in them. The only cup that is the only paint that's got silicon in it is the white which is my top coat here which I'll talk about in a second. <clears throat> and 
and then we'll finish off with the red. I wanted the red to be a little bit higher up. But usually once you tilt it, you'll see all colours anyway. So I want a little bit more paint over on this corner. Okay, so there we go with that lot. Now the white. The white is thinner. It's the same um, Elmer's glue, um, Elmer's clear glue and wa water mixture mixed with just a plain white Montmartre paint. And then it has some silicon added into it. So it's a little bit thinner than the colours that are in there. I can't give you the exact measurements because I have adjusted it a couple of times now. But start off with one to one and then add a little bit more until you get a little bit more of a thinner mixture. And work, you, sometimes you may have to just work it out a little bit from there. Well, it's not always the easiest to, because I did a painting and I found that the, the white wasn't holding the cells well enough they were, they were spreading too much so I, I changed it up and made everything a little bit thicker so sometimes it's practice but the last two that I've done with this same white have turned out good so I've just stirred it um, it's in an airtight container so it should still be the same consistency approximately now We've got a little paint on here. We just want to move it around. I do want to cover the edges, the corners. So I am going to corner capture it while I'm here. So down in the corner, bring it back and then take your corner catcher off. Always leave your corner catcher there until you've taken um, the paint back away from that edge because otherwise you end up losing a lot of it over the edge. So if you pour it, then bring it back, then take the corner catcher off. You'll still lose some over the edge, but it's not as excessive. And now we're going into this corner. In the corner, bring it back. And this is the time to watch for what I call globs, which is thick parts of paint that is not moving as good in the canvas. Because there's nothing in this now and you haven't swiped. So you can alter this pattern to your liking now while you can. Once you have let it settle, or you start doing the swiping, you can't change that. It's You're stuck with what you've got. So, where's my heavy part of my paint? Let me move it. I can't really see any thick bits or any globby bits, so I think I'm actually doing all right. I am just going to check my corners or edges and make sure that they are completely covered. Sometimes where the corner catcher sits, there's a little bit less paint. Just rub on the underneath part, the overflow, and just dab a bit on where it should be. And there we go. So now we have our prepared canvas. Time to get my gloves off. I hate working in gloves. They get in my way, I can't, I need the feel of it. Um, <clears throat> but we can't, I try and put, put the, keep them on for the main part and then take them off. If I get a little bit of paint, I can always wash that off, but it's hard when you wash off blue hands and then they're still blue underneath and you go to work and everyone's wondering why you got blue hands. I should know by now that I paint. 
Right, I'm going to take the pop stick out so I can actually dip into the paint easier. So let me just double check I'm recording. I hate it when it stops before I... Yes, it's moving wonderfully. Okay. So now, this is paper towel that is cut into slithers. Um, I like this width. Any wider, it's a bit harder to handle. Any thinner, um, you're just doing a lot more extra work. So I've got a thin piece here. Where did I put it? There. I've got a thin piece there if I need to adjust something, but I usually try not to because I'm more likely to mess it up. Now with this, I want to dip this into my white paint mixture, about one centimeter, which is a little bit less than half an inch. And then we want to, actually, I need to swipe towards me. Place it down in the middle. I think that's the middle and then just gently pull it along and off the edge now that paper towel I'm throwing out now I always use the bit which has the little tears in it because it kind of gives you these little finger streaks um, you can use the end that you've cut with scissors but I like these little the little tear parts if that makes sense so now we just dip the next one in, about, again, about one centimetre. Make sure you don't drip anything onto the actual, okay. It's not so bad if you drip where you haven't swiped, but you don't want to drip where you have swiped. And that's about it, everyone. We just go along. Doing this, you kind of just overlap it, only millimetres. Drag it along. Now, I first saw Julie do this, um, Julie Cuts from Pouring Your Heart Out, and I thought it was awesome. And I've done these a few times now, and I really like them. Try and keep your starting point the same. Try and I'm moved it a little bit when I need to kind of get that back to where I was. So I find where you put your paper towel down, you have it probably takes half a centimetre before it starts actually pulling and showing the white. Yeah, there we go. And one thing I didn't do, which I should have done, was torched my colours. There's no silicon in them. It wouldn't have made any difference. It would have just popped all those bubbles. But now that I've started putting the white on, which does have silicon, I'm not going to. I'm just going to live, live with it. And you can do this swipe colour in any colour you choose. <clears throat> I found the white has been working well for me. I did use the silver. Um, it behaved a little bit different. Probably my consistency was a bit different. It's the one thing with metallics. You do have to work out the consistencies a little bit more differently. Now, see I didn't go close enough. There's a little streak of colour. I don't care. I'm going to make more of an issue if I try to fix it then leave that tiny little streak but if it's if it's a bad streak then you can always re-go over it with that 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 smaller piece that you cut the thinner piece oh, that was not the straightest but that's okay all it means is when we start on that side we just start slightly off so you could do this as a staggered swipe if you like I haven't done that um I kind of like it even like this. But there is nothing that says that you cannot do this in your own way, your own style. So I missed a tiny bit there. 
I'm going to leave it for now and I'll think about it as I go. Now one thing I do have to do, I have to turn this around so I'm pulling towards me again. So you just, <laughs> just being stubborn. Turn it around, do not pull your hands over the top of your canvas. You will get drips of paint and you will ruin all your hard work. Just have to wipe my fingers because all that paint on there. So at the moment it doesn't look like a lot apart from just um, some white swiped over a colour. But give it time. Once I've finished and I start um, torching it, it will change the look of it. And I'm hoping for some awesome multicolored cells because I tried using dark and light colors. And then all we do is do the same on this side, except you, <laughs> You just got to try and match up where you were last. So you you can leave a little gap in the middle with like colour peeking through. Um, I don't really feel like having that on my this one today, so I'm not going to do that. And try and pull your paper towel straight so you get straight lines. Unless you want um, nice wavy lines. But I think the straight ones actually tend to turn out a little bit more appealing. In this type of swipe. This is about it. It's not a difficult one to do. It's more just trying to, like, like for me, holding the paper towel, getting it the right spot can sometimes be a challenge. And you just don't want it dripping. So that white drip that I have over there will it will be a little bit noticeable I don't think it's going to be terrible but you will see extra white in that spot now, see how that one didn't quite get there doesn't matter if I try and re-swipe that one piece again, that there will be more whiter than the rest and you will actually notice that it's been re-swiped. But I am pretty happy with this. And make sure you have enough of your paper towels cut. Because you don't want to fall short. Which... <laughs> I should say that to myself. Because I am... I have just enough. I thought I had enough, but you, you'd rather have extra than not enough. And try to keep to the same brand paper towel for the whole artwork. If you change different brands for a different pa um, pa painting, that's fine. But for this whole painting, try and stick with the same brand.
that's it all as I have left is my little fix up one which I am not going to use I've decided nah I'm going to leave it so put your lid back on your white in a nice I've got this um, glass seal seal container the last thing you want is it drying out and having especially when you got a mix that you feels doing good now so I always blow my heat gun just to make sure there's no dust or anything sitting on it that's going to fall off sometimes a piece of hair gets on there and then as you're waving it around it falls down into the artwork you don't want that so get your blowtorch or your heat gun ready now it is up to you where you torch I don't want too much in the middle I want most of my cells to be on the edges so start off slow and from a distance you don't want to create um, the best way to say it is once there's a cell there's a cell you can't reverse that so you're better off to go slow and steady than to overdo it and be upset with yourself because you've just created a ton of cells that you weren't exactly planning for. Now I do have a habit of getting no cells and then a whole bunch turn up all at once. So like everything judge your own your own abilities because that then will make the difference. I think a lot of us know whether we're good at a particular thing or not. And you can usually tell when you're going to get a cell because you get little dots quickly form. So I hope this part doesn't bore you guys too much, but I'd rather do it steady. I don't, I don't want to rush it. Always keep your torch moving. If you let it settle in one spot, you'll get lots of cells. I find my silicon always comes up in clusters. It's just how it happens. And then I'm moving over to the other side now. Whoa, I got too close. So I get nothing come up and then suddenly a whole bunch just start appearing all at once. I do want to try out some different um, silicons and see if they behave a little bit more differently. 
I do have a couple, um, but I would like to try some more brands, I think. Whoa, see, a whole bunch all just started appearing out of nowhere. I must have got like one centimeter closer to the canvas, and it just went, that's close enough to make a cell. I'm trying to avoid that one section there because I don't want giants because I find the more the white where the white is the more you're going to get a giant cell <laughs> cells galore I get too close and it just goes Thanks, I'm making cells. And my silicon was stirred up quite well because I wanted to make sure the paint was some um, stirred and not having thick spots. So I've got to try and even these out a little bit. So I've got to get a couple more cells in this area. Well, so I got a bit close and a whole whole party came up but I do like lots of cells I don't mind how they behave but I do want some of the negative space as well or non cell space I'm gonna turn it off now this I've had on for a long time it is extremely hot do not put it anywhere where it can touch anything a pet a kid um, plastic don't let it fall over keep it upright I have a concrete floor and it is going in the middle where nothing can touch it except for me who is probably the stupidest one to put near it because I'm more likely to touch it with my leg but um, just be warned with those I I think all the the safety things you need to just be a little bit careful of um, my work is all about safety so um i use chemicals and machinery so um i know what to do that doesn't mean i always actually do it when at home when i'm by myself so keep that in mind now this is what has appeared definitely got small cells and i would say that is a result of me stirring my silicon up a lot um if you want bigger cells, then you can water down the white paint slightly. Just keep in mind, where the white is thicker, you'll get giant cells. And then you'll get smaller cells as it fizzles out, if you water it down. I learned this from one of my other paintings. If it's too runny, you get giant cells here and they don't hold their shape very well. And then the ones down here do. And it looks really out of place when if you keep that the white that little bit thicker just a tad you will get smaller cells yes but they will be more uniformed and they don't go funny um also maybe just don't stir the silicon like as vigorously but because i used paint i had already previously used and i had been i think it'd been sitting in this container for probably two or three weeks um it needed stirring you can actually see the separation between um, the glue and the paint in a way. I don't exactly know what separates, but um, it was separating. So, this is my earthy colour paper towel swipe. I am quite enjoying this. I didn't get a ton of the dark colour. But that is also the bottom colour. So whatever colour you want to be the most prominent, put on the top. Whatever colour you want to kind of just be in the background a little bit and not take over, put it at the bottom. So even though I did two layers, I always put that, um, was it raw? I can never remember these colours. Uh, the burnt umber. 
because I put the burnt umber at the bottom both times, that's because I didn't want it to take over and be a whole big blob of brown. Um, I wanted the reds, I wanted the yellow okra, I wanted the sienna to come through. And I think it's actually come through in quite a good a good way. It hasn't, nothing really seems to be overtaking. Um, it's probably more of the sienna than I can see other colours, but it could just be because it's a medium colour. So I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. There we go. Sorry, I didn't realise it was a 40, 30 minute video. Time goes quick. So that's the whole artwork. It will settle in a little bit more. I don't think the cells will grow um, terribly. There's not, uh, that's not thin enough for them to do that. But look at all these awesome cells. And they kind of mix a little bit and then have their own little patches. You come along and Yes, I do. See how I, a lot of my cells are in clusters? That's just what happens. I'm going to try other brands and see if they cluster less. Um, cluster less. But I love all the colours coming through in this. And that white does make the colours pop more. And just kind of shows them off. But look at these cells. Look how cool they all are. These are the cluster ones when they kind of pop up and all push together. But some of them are absolute miniature. And look in there. That's absolutely beautiful. I can really focus on so close. Yeah, there we go. There's another patch down here. We've got miniature, miniature ones and bigger ones around. You've got rings in them. Got these nice chocolate rings with the yellow okra or okra i don't know how to pronounce it but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this so let me know what you think like share comment and subscribe if you have not already and i'll see you soon for another pour have a great night okay bye